So welcome to another episode of Fitness Reborn UK live here on Winject Studios. And today's topic is going to be nice, short and sweet. Willpower versus skill power in your health and fitness goals. So I want to give you a little backstory because stories are always great for us to actually understand what's going on. Yesterday I had a client about 6.30 in the evening, the UK time. And I learned a bit about her beforehand in the consultation. And it was amazing getting to know her, understand where she was mentally, physically, and spiritually. One of the key things a lot of my clients tell me is my willpower runs out by two weeks. Willpower runs out by the end of the month. And they're always searching this newness in their fitness goals and their emotional well-being. Now, what I know about the fitness industry is there's always going to be something new coming out for us to try, whether it's a new product, whether it's a new fitness regime, a trend. If Beyonce does something, we all want to jump on that. If JLo does something, we want to jump on that. And, you know, you get the gist. Now, the problem with willpower is it doesn't last. Willpower is doing something you don't want to do. Okay, think about this. Willpower is only going to be short-lived and one of the best ways I teach my clients to recreate a habit and the one that I did with yesterday was understanding how long her willpower lasts so that's a pattern you start on Monday by Wednesday the willpower is gone so you start another vicious cycle for some people it's two weeks three weeks so on so the will the fact that willpower is very short-lived means you're going to go through a vicious cycle of emotional carnage right you start you stop you start you stop going back to what I just said before willpower is something doing something that you do not enjoy now I call this willpower versus skill power in your health and fitness goals to give you some tools and tips maybe to encourage you to do something in a different way if something isn't working and for years, and we do this all the time, we do the same thing again and again, doing the same workout, eating the same food, expecting the same result, and it doesn't. So we get frustrated, we become annoyed, and you know, New Year's trends are literally around the corner, three weeks away, and everybody's going to be jumping on the bandwagon of starting their fitness goals. This time around, what I want you all to do is think about skill power. It's so powerful. When I learned about this in one of my neuroscience fitness calls, it changed the game for me individually, myself, sorry, and what I teach my clients, understanding where they're operating from, what part of the brain they're operating from, what needs to be recreated and what needs to be rebuilt in their brain pattern, okay? So skill power versus everything that you do in your life, to how you're going to adopt it into a fitness goal. So let me give you an example. Everything that we do is a skill that we practiced again and again and again before, you know, it becomes a part of us. Waking up, you go to the toilet. Waking up, you brush your teeth, you have a routine, you have a ritual, brushing your teeth, eating breakfast, washing, going to the toilet, all of that stuff. It's a skill that you have done again and again and again, so your body knows it without you actually thinking about it right? And I think Joey Dispenza says it so beautifully, um, you become the thought without thinking about it, I believe, okay? And the point of having, practicing all those skills is because you need to function as a human being, doing those things means, you know, the day ahead is going to go according to the way you've planned it. If you are able to now adopt a skill power, you can do it in your fitness as well. Going to work is a skill. Learning about your job is skill. Whether you make money or not is still a skill that you have practiced. Okay, multimillionaires, you know, they can lose everything in a day and they will have the knowledge, right? And the skill to actually rebuild their empire again. It's a fact, okay? So one of the key things I want to teach you guys here is let's get rid of everything that you've learned about health and fitness. Let's get rid of everything that you've learned about yourself in the fitness game. We're going to start with a clean slate. And this time around, get a piece of paper and write down all the skills that you're very good at. 
For example, learning how to ride a bike, learning how to drive, learning how to do a particular job, maybe retail, your, I don't know, whatever office jobs that you do. Think about all the things that you are good at, even if it means brushing your teeth. Just as simple as that. Brushing your hair, putting your makeup on, whatever it is you've learned, write it down. Then what I want you guys to do is adopt that in your fitness game. And how you're going to do this is very simple. Take one task, one task only for the next couple of weeks or even a week. If somebody can't, some people can't see the light at the end of the tunnel when it's a month away. So dissect it into a week, maybe even four days to start with. Then say, let's see how the seven days goes, then 14 days, then so forth, okay? And what you're going to do is just practice one thing. And that one thing could be even waking up on time. That one thing could be drinking two and a half liters of water every single day consistently. That one thing could be, no matter what your emotion is, you're going to get into the gym. And one of the best things I did with a client that I train online is getting her to go to the gym without feeling anxious, getting her to go and train without needing me, getting her to go to the gym without having a friend. Every day I set her task. Her outcome was to train in the gym for a whole hour. But to start with, if you're somebody who's anxiety induced because you're so worried about what people are going to think about you, and a lot of people do, because they're so consumed about pleasing other people, you go there for the first day, you just stare at the gym. And that's all you can do. That's fine. Come out, go the next day. Touch the machine if you have to, but stay there for five minutes. Come out. And then the third day, you might have the guts to actually use one of the equipment. By using the equipment, you're now neurologically practicing to come out of your comfort zone. So the fourth day, the client went in. Her name was Zainab, all the way from up north. The fourth day she went in and something amazing happened. And these are the exact words. I did something that I've never done before, and which was using a treadmill. For me, it seems so tiny, but for her, that was a big jump. Now, in order for her to become a part of that habit, she has to keep practicing it. And that skill becomes more, how do we say it, strengthened over time. Because everything that we do is practice. And I love this word practice. How we speak about ourselves is practice. How we do things in life is practice. And this week, one of my major wins has been actually waking up at six o'clock and gain everything done within an hour and a half time frame. So I'm not wasting time and acting like a princess. And by doing that, what you're doing is executing a mindset of wanting more for, for yourself. And wanting more for yourself means adding those um, small habits, staying disciplined to those small, minor, micro habits that make the big picture. I think a lot of us By the way, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. A lot of us in the fitness game are overwhelmed. And it is overwhelming because the way we've been taught in the fitness industry to do, like to perform certain exercises, to do things, it's so outdated. We have to look back at how our ancestors did things and what the body is craving for. The body is always craving for freedom. It doesn't like to be restricted. And one of the things I say to people is as well, your soul and your spirit will tell you what's right for you from the get-go. This this applies in every area of your life, by the way, your relationship at work, um, your primary relationships, things that you're doing, your intuition will tell you beforehand. And the thing is we ignore it, then we get into trouble. With the fitness, it's the same. One day you may wake up and say, hey, I don't want to touch this machine. I might want to go for a walk. Practice doing those small things and listening and tuning in. Going back to willpower. Willpower will help you get started. Shadow without a doubt, right? But the idea is then to transfer it into what are the good things that you're good at? The good skills, the positive skills. This could be your hardcore skills, your soft skills soft core, is that even a word, soft skills that you can adopt from 
areas of work, areas of everyday practice, and then getting it aligned with your fitness goals. So I want you to give this a go. Like I said, short and sweet, um, and understand where you are mentally this year round or the coming year, 2022. One of the key things I've learned about my journey as a fitness coach, my journey as a human actually in this game is I spent 15 years, <laughs> 15 core years of my life creating these resolutions, New Year's resolutions, to be more specific. Um, and every year I found myself getting frustrated more and more because I couldn't commit to it. But in the last few years, as I grew mentally and spiritually and, you know, able to give back to my clients in a deeper way, it's really understanding the core of what we're working with. So one brick at a time, build the foundation of the house properly and then the house is solid so in that same way build your solid fan your foundations on um that first brick that's what i'm trying to say um and then when you get that brick right and getting the basic stuff right the knowledge of the brick is the basic stuff that like sleep water daily exercise eating on time everything else flows so I'm going to leave you guys on that. Let me know how you go. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if anything didn't make sense as well. And let me know what your skills are and what you're going to practice. Take one thing in summary. Take one thing and just do it for the next week, 14 days and so forth. Until next week, speak to you then. Peace out cast is brought to you by Winject Studios. We are an all-in-one educational platform for podcasters that revolutionizes how hosts leverage content to increase engagement with listeners, downloads, and income. We come together to focus on community, collaboration, and collective impact. For more information on how you can interact directly with our hosts, access exclusive live content with offers you can't get anywhere else from our official partners, join our purpose-driven community by visiting www.winject.com. If you're ready to build a career doing what you love, then we're ready to see you there.